Hey guys, look at us, we're starting on time. And we have the 2020 Audi S8 here for you today. And I wanna first take a second to just acknowledge those folks who always tune into these live Q and A's. Thank you so much for being part of this. It really makes my day, makes Christina's day. And of course we have Christina manning the camera as usual, doing a great job. Christina, say hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> Gotta speak up, baby. Hi. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so who do we have with us right now? Uh, Frantisic Kovalik. You gotta speak up. Frantisic Kovalik, Sobre Caros, Finn the Gamer. Yep. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, guys. Okay, so let's get into the questions that we first had on Instagram at miles per hour, and then the ones from YouTube community, and then, of course, the live ones that we're gonna have here. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified to get the daily video uploads. We will have the POV day drive, night drive, and a walk around for this car up soon. So go ahead. Okay, how does rear passenger space compare to the S Class and 7 Series? Okay, from so, Hayden. From Hayden. Okay, so we can show that. We can show the rear passenger space. Um, I'll just give you a, a number. So all three of those cars are very similar. Uh, they're all right around, you saw the air suspension just raise the car there. Um, they're all right around 44 inches of rear legroom. And I think the S-Class has a tiny bit less and the BMW has a tiny bit more than the S8. Um, but they're all like pretty reclined and relaxed back here. These seats do recline on this particular model. We've got the rear comfort package, which, at, which adds massaging seats and heating for the rear passengers. And we also have the executive package, which adds something else. I can't remember, but as you can see, like I'm pretty relaxed back here. This is Christina's sitting position, which is maybe a little further back than it normally would be. That's my driving position at six feet tall. You can see the car is a little further forward. I don't know if you can, because the sun you may have to jump in for a sec. So really you can kind of stretch out and there are, eh, the foot pockets could be bigger. I would like if the foot pockets were bigger so I get my feet further under there but um, there are available like where you can have this seat fully forward and then you can have a leg rest that will come down on this car, but that's not equipped on this particular model. You can also have a four seater configuration. We have the five seater configuration with the center console that comes down. Do you get massaging seats? Yes, you do. You didn't mention that. Okay, you do get massaging seats with, this, with the rear seat comfort package and the executive package. All right, what's the next question? How many cup holders huh. and how big from Grandma Sharded herself? How many cup holders and how big? Great question. That name every week. I know, every week. All right, so let's see. In the back here, no cup holders there. We do have two. So we've got one, two in the center console here. Then we've got three, four on the rear doors. And those are pretty good size. The center console ones there, not that big. Christine is using one of them right up here. So three, four, five. These, these front door pockets are really pretty big. So five, six, and then we have seven, eight, and those two ones in the middle are not that big. I think my large water bottle, which I happen to have right here, can fit in these door pockets. Let's see. Yep, fits right in there. So pretty good size for the ones in the front doors and I think in the rear doors as well. So eight total. Eight total. Eight is our number. Yes, so they can fit in the rear as well. It's important stuff, that's scientific right there. I'm gonna use it, it's really hot here. Do you prefer this Ugh. over the 2021 S-Class from Joel? Mm, good question, Joel. So my answer is gonna be predicated on driving impressions in addition to the rear or the interior features. I have not been able to drive the 2021 S-Class, so I can't say whether I would prefer the driving experience of that one over this S8. I will say, we just drove this S8, that's why it's kind of dirty, sorry. Uh, we just drove it for two hours down from Orange County to San Diego in California, and it's so smooth. It's so, so smooth. The air suspension, uh, just the, the ride quality, the, the, um, the power is linear and just progressively builds. The transmission is smooth in terms of its shifting. So I think that the driving experience, not having been in the 2021 S-Class, it's gotta be pretty good 
to be able to beat this S8. In terms of the interior, I think that the new S-Class has some really killer features, especially as it relates to technology. Um, the ambient lighting in that car is incredible. The 3D gauge cluster is really cool. The augmented reality for the head up and for the navigation is also awesome. And uh, I mean, like, I kind of like the design of the S8's interior. Some people are hating on it a little bit, but I kind of like it. I think that the, well, I'm, gonna, I'm getting too far in here. So well, let's just call it, say, I don't know exactly because I haven't driven the new S-Class, but I'm gonna say, the drive has to be pretty good to beat this S8. Okay, and just a heads up, if we do shut down, it's because the phone overheated. Mm. Fair point, Christina. We actually should probably move to the shade at some point. Okay. okay, anyway. How nice is the interior from La Meat? Okay, well, so we just had a look at some of the interior. This is great, great uh, transition here. Let's move to the shade because one, the phone might overheat, and two, can't really show you the interior in the sun. We have some harsh shadows. So whoa. we saw the air suspension raise, whoa, whoa, whoa. which makes it easier to get Sorry. in and wait, out. Wait, wait. Oh. We lost hey. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it wouldn't be Sorry. it wouldn't be a live Q and A if we didn't have technical <laughs> difficulties. Honestly, Christina yeah. didn't miss it. We're up. just moving right over there. All right, so the interior. We're looking at a bit of it right now. What we can see first and foremost is that there is a ton of this piano black material. So this black gloss stuff is all over the dashboard. It's all over the center console. And as we see right here, this car has, uh, I'm not sure the exact mileage, but it's, it's under like 3000 miles. And this is already scratched up and it smudges way too easily. So that doesn't give me great vibes on the interior. The uh, instrument, uh, the infotainment screens here are great. I will get into those. I think we have another question on those later, but the seats are wrapped in a Valcona leather, very comfortable. The front seats have massaging, heating, or me, ventilation. It's, it's all good in here but I don't think I like the piano black all over the place. That brings down the interior for me relative to say like the BMW 7 Series or the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Okay, and just a heads up, we are doing questions from Instagram first. Yeah. And, and then we will get to And then we'll questions. get to uh, the live questions on YouTube. So hang in there. Would you take this over a 750 or S580 from Dylan? Okay, so that's it's a good question. It actually matches up, the S8 more matches up with the Mercedes-AMG S63 and the BMW M760i. Um, the S8 Plus that is to come will definitely be directly rivaling those. This is sort of a strange middle ground, but it's closer to the S63 and the 760i than it is to the um, 580, the Mercedes S-Class 580 and the BMW 750i, just to kind of frame the reference here. Would I take this over those cars? Um, well, that's a good question. I think that certain features of the S-Class or certain features of the S8, they all have so many alphanumeric things, it's very hard to keep it all straight, are more desirable. I like the driving dynamics of this vehicle quite a bit. The power is so smooth. The ride is so nice. Not that it isn't in the other two cars. I just think this is pretty darn good. Um, I think that the interior of the new 7 Series is the best of the three right now. I think that the S8 has some room to improve in that regard, especially as it relates to the piano black stuff. I don't like it at all. And I think that the, the S-Class, the current generation S-Class, is gonna get some updates for 2021. That w is pretty nice. But I'm gonna say that I think maybe the I just don't like how the seven the uh, BMW M760i looks, and that might be enough to uh, to push me away from it. Mmm, that's really difficult. It's really I I don't know I don't know which one I would prefer. I think I'd probably lean towards that BMW if not for the way it looks. Okay, next question because okay. I, I can't give you a conclusion there. I'm sorry. Is this worth the price bump? 
over the A8 from Carl. Okay, so the A8 starts at 86,000. This starts at 130. So, uh, what is that? 20, uh, 54,000? No, 44,000. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Okay, yeah, it's 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 like forty-four thousand dollars more expensive than the um, than the A8, the S8 is, and what you're getting there is about a hundred horsepower more. You're getting more standard features. You're getting that active air suspension as standard. You're getting some like these front seats are twenty-two power adjustable, um, heating and ventilated standard, panoramic sunroof is standard. You're getting a lot of standard goodies, but forty-six thousand dollars is a chunk of change. So you have to decide whether you want that additional power. Um, I think, considering you can get a V8 in the eight, sorry, it's 100 more horsepower than the more potent version of the A8, which is going to be more closer to like 90,000, um, 94,000. So, so then the price delta becomes different. It's more like $30,000 difference. Christine is, Christine is getting bored with, with my explanation. Um, if you like this power, it's going to be worth it. If you like the standard features that are offered in the S8, it's going to be worth it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you a fan of the silver pencil beard up mm. front? Okay, so let's, let's go look at that. Blake asked about the silver, silver pencil beard. That is not for reference. That's not Audi's term for it. They call it the Alu Optic. Uh, well, actually, this is just chrome. The aloe optic is making up the silver, fresh silver pieces uh, that signify that this is an S product, not a standard A8. Sorry, the, uh, the fan is really loud. Do I like the chrome surrounding the, the, the grill? It doesn't bother me. You can get the black optic package, which is going to black out all of those details. So the whole grill would be black except for these full rings. The grill would be black, the door trim would be black, the mirror caps would be blacked out. This uh, lower piece down here, I think, would be black. So you can get the black optic package if you don't like that. It doesn't bother me because it kind of goes with all of the silver finishes on the car. If it was just this, like, surround, then it would be weird, but it goes on the S8. Next question. Okay. Do you like the touch only slash fingerprints galore infotainment? Yeah. Okay. So we already talked about we talked about the uh, all of the smudges on the piano black stuff. We didn't talk about the infotainment yet though, so we can show that. We'll go open your door. Air suspension raises. So, to Blake's point, the infotainment now is only touch. There's just a physical volume knob. That's the only detail on the car, um, on the infotainment. So it's all going to be touch, but it's not just touch. It's got haptic feedback. So you know whether your indication has actually gone through because it gives you a click, an audible click, and you can feel the depression in the infotainment. That is kind of the deal break, or that is that is the that is the thing that makes it work for me. If they didn't have the haptic feedback, I would probably hate it because you want some sense while you're driving that what you're doing on the infotainment is actually going through. Um, so haptic feedback works in that regard. I think the actual infotainment is really sweet. It's visually visually crisp. The layout is very user friendly. You can find everything you need to very easily. I like the split of having all of your entertainment up top and all of your climate control down low along with some shortcuts. That all just makes sense. I think among touch only infotainments, Audi's MMI is probably the best right now. Um, but it's never gonna replace for me physical buttons and their ease of use and the fact that you can always keep your eyes on the road and just kind of like hunt around and find whatever control you're going for. But that's not the way the car world right now. The car world is very much going towards these touch displays. So as those go, this is probably the least insulting. Okay. Is ambient lights a luxurious trend or fast 
been the furious trend from <laughs> Paul? Uh, the ambient lights uh, are very much a trend among luxury vehicles. If you've seen anything of the 7 Series, the S-Class, or the A8 or S8, you're going to see some ambient lights in some photos. I actually think they're pretty cool. Um, at first, I, I really thought it was a trend, it was going to go away. The longer it's stuck around and the more they've been able to improve on not just the quality of the ambient lights, the placements, the functionality of them, like I was just in the new S-Class, and if you watched my highlight, top five highlight video of the S-Class, which plug, you should go watch that, um, you'll see that the ambient lights are interactive. So if you talk to the navigation system, um, their MIME Mercedes or whatever they call it, then it will give you some ambient light feedback to show that it's like hearing you. Um, you they also have some safety feature integration. So the ambient lights up here on the doors, if the door senses that there's like a biker coming by, then it will flash at you before you open the door. So you know like, hey, don't open the door any further. Or if your blind spots uh, being triggered and you're trying to change the lanes, it'll flash at you. So I like that they're starting to think of how we can use ambient lights, not just as a cool detail, but as like a user-friendly safety feature. That's neat. And therefore, I don't think it's the fast and the freest trend, though I love the reference. Really well done, Blake. Paul. But the, am yeah. <laughs> but the ambient lights in here don't do that. No, the ambient lights in here do not do that. The ambient lights in here are probably like maybe a, a one step back from that. They're still cool. You still have a lot of functionality, a lot of different settings that you can make for the ambient lights and lighting and visibility, interior lighting. Um, you've got some mixes of different lights in here so it'll blend different colors for a look or you can actually like go into the different surfaces or lines and various colors so here we can see we've got 30 different colors that we can program for the surfaces or lines not as much as i think mercedes-benz is like 64 colors wow okay christina is <laughs> all about the enthusiasm today it's really hot. Yeah, it is. Okay, SA or AMG S63 from Hiro Fumi Ono. Okay, so yeah, we already kind of <laughs> talked about this, S63 or S8. Um, if it's going to be to drive, I'm going to say S8. To be driven, I might go S63 because I like the use of materials in that car. I think the leather feels a bit better in that car. And yeah. I'm going to say S63 to be driven, S8 to drive. <laughs> How does this compare with the 7 Series as a chauffeured vehicle from Michael? Okay, so we kind of talked about the rear seat accommodations a little bit. Um, I'm going to hop back there and just kind of show you. Space is not going to be an issue. As I already talked about with Hayden's question, the leg room is going to be about the same with the S class and the A and the S8. Again, so many different letters and numbers. Sorry, um, but I think that the the setup in the S class, um, whether you do four seat or five seat, I think that this center console area is a bit nicer in the S class. Um, the ride quality is going to be very similar between the two for the rear passengers. And the features like the reclining seats and the foot uh, spot, if you, a foot rest for both of those cars, those are features you can get. You can get the displays on the backs of the seats in both those cars. It's gonna be very similar between the two. It's more gonna be uh, decided, decided on whether you like the use of the materials in the S-Class or in the A-Class, the A8, um, better. That's, that's gonna be the deciding factor I think that I lean more towards the S63 in terms of the rear seat space and rear seat accommodations. Yeah, you keep talking about Mercedes. Yeah, as, as it relates to competitors. I'm saying you might like it more, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> how is, or how different is the new S8 from the older one, from Hirofumi Ono? Well, so, uh, I mean, the old S8 is was based on the old a8 this new s8 based on the new a8 completely new generation of car um, the powertrain they both use four liter twin turbo v8s but this one now has a mild hybrid system it makes more pander power makes more pander makes more power than the standard s8 um, of the old generation but the old generation had an s8 plus 
that made over 600 horsepower or maybe 600 dead and then the SA plus is still to come for this car but I imagine it's gonna make more than 600 horsepower so they're different I prefer actually the styling of the old generation S8 to this new one on the outside except for the light signatures the matrix design LED lights are so cool um, on the new generation S8 but I like the kind of like boxier look of the old generation S8 styling what's the engine from kitten the engine, uh, just mentioned it's a four liter twin turbo V8 paired with a mild hybrid system. We can go look at it if it's not gonna be too hot. Am I locked back here? Yeah, I mean, you might have to. Oh. I might be locked back here. No, just keep you there. Okay. Okay. That's weird. Okay. No, no, like, like you're gonna have to go open the door. Oh. Should I open the door, everyone? That's the question. Should I let him out? Yes or no? <laughs> so fun fact, I actually heard the door like trying to open itself. It was like click, 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 click. So the locks, might be something going on there. Um, I'm gonna pop the hood. Is. Nothing too special to look at. It's mostly just a plastic cover like most of these cars these days. But we can see two air intake systems and 563 horsepower is available. 590 pound feet of torque, 0 to 60, 3.8 seconds. That's crazy for a car that weighs 5,500 pounds. It's pretty nuts. Quad to all wheel drive, of course, that's an Audi signature, that is standard, and it uses an 8 speed automatic to send power to those wheels. We've got a limited slip rear differential as part of the S8 model, not the A8. So that is, that's all your powertrain stuff. What's the next question? Um, we're going to get into YouTube, but I'm guessing they can't hear you from Yeah, probably. Okay, okay I can grab it. I'm going to put it in dynamic mode to do that. Just be off to the side a little bit. Yes, it is a bit Just guttural. Like, yeah, guttural, there you go. Guttural. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Okay. Is there another question? We're going to get into questions yeah. on YouTube. All right. Hey, Miles, if you were looking at the chat, do you think you could try to do a 3D audio POV drive of the 2012 Lamborghini Aventador LP704? Oh boy, yeah. Unfortunately, Ben the Gamer. Ben the Gamer. Um, I am looking at the chat clearly. Unfortunately, I only do my POV drives and walkarounds on newer vehicles that I get straight from the automaker. So I can't go back and get a 2012 model unless it's someone's own personal car. If someone wants to loan me their 2012 Aventador, then I would be happy to do a POV drive of that one. Unfortunately, I don't know anyone who owns one of those cars off the top of my head. So. Yeah, but that's kind of the deal. Like, I get new cars, not used cars. Okay, what is the top speed from Daniel Anderson? Uh, if you remove the limiter, it's going to be way higher than the limited speed, which is 155. I bet you this would do very close to 200 miles an hour with uh, without the limiter. Probably 190. Okay, from Harsh, what's your opinion about this statement? Audi is just a fancy Volkswagen. Hmm, I definitely disagree. I feel that the experiences in an Audi are completely different from a Volkswagen. Yes, if you hunt around, you can find some shared materials uh, in places that you're not gonna be looking and seeing and touching on a daily basis. But I feel like the driving experience is very different. 
I feel like the uh, user interfaces are different. I feel like the quality of the materials, for the most part, it's very different. So I don't, I mean, you, you say in that statement a fancy Volkswagen, but I don't even feel like when I get into a Volkswagen and then I get into an Audi, I don't feel like it's very much the same car. It's completely overhauled, completely separate, um, much more so even than like if you get into a Bentley and after getting out of an Audi, I think you can even draw some comparisons there. Um, but it's a, a much bigger leap, I feel like, from a Volkswagen to an Audi than an Audi to a Bentley. Just my my two cents. Hey, what's the price from Pixelinated? Uh, the starting price for the 2020 S8 is $130,000. The one I've got here is $148,000. I would imagine you'd have to lean on your other senses. So if you're listening, you're not hearing much in terms of the cabin volume, the wind noise, the road noise is very minimal. The Bang & Olufsen sound system is excellent in this car. So you'll be hearing that if you want to listen to some music. And the feel of the materials is very, very good in the S8. As I've already made clear, I think that perhaps the new 7 Series or the S-Class have some small edge. And that might be why they cost another, like the M760i and the S63 are about $20,000 more expensive than the S8. So keep that in mind. They do make a little more power, but they cost $20,000 more. So you're paying for it, but I think you do get some higher end materials in terms of the rear. Those are things you might be feeling. You'll be feeling the quality of the leather. You'll be feeling the, the ability to recline, the massaging seats that are equipped on this particular model. All good sensory feelings that you'll have beyond just your visual cues. I hope that helps, Gal. From Zach, does it seem to attract a lot of attention? I don't like being the center of attention and I feel like this is a, a bit flashy. Uh, it's a good question. Audi, among those three that I mentioned, the 760i, the S63, and this S8, is the most subtle. So if you want something flagship luxury, if you want a flagship luxury sedan, but you don't want the flash, you're definitely gonna lean away from the S-Class because that's the flashiest of all of them. Then the 760, with that huge grill on it now, I think that has to attract attention. So I think this is the most subtle if you want something in this segment, uh, but you don't want to go spend in the $200,000. Sorry, trying to see it with the glare. Hi, Andrew Parker. Thanks for joining. Andrew is always here. Thank you for joining, Andrew. Okay, what is the engine? Did we we, we talked about the engine. From Mil okay. Thank you, Kyle. Um, are you gonna get to my question? We did. <laughs> how much? How much trunk space from Edith? The trunk space is actually terrible relative to the size of the car but it's also bad in the in the 7 series and the s class so forgive us we do have a couple things in here but it's only 14 cubic feet of space so it's very narrow that's the one weird thing about the car it's a pretty narrow trunk it does go back fairly far and you can fold down i think you can fold down those seats i may be wrong you may actually not be able to fold down those seats in which case you just have the trunk there's gonna be enough space for a couple large suitcases and maybe a couple um, carry-on suitcases, but it's not a massive trunk as you might expect for a vehicle of this size. 14 cubic feet. We should drive a little and... Okay, we'll drive a tiny bit. It's toasty. It is warm. Whoa, guys. I just smacked the camera with the door. Oh, no. <laughs> Gotta love it. It's okay, we, we also inverted it because of the the audio system fell off so mm -hmm. we're doing well all right seat belt okay wouldn't volkswagen rtion be a better buy in terms of value than this from harsh mm, uh, so i mean i already talked about the differences between a yeah. volkswagen and an audi product I think the Arteon is actually even just in a completely different segment. It's more a mid-size coupe design sedan 
Whereas this is very much firmly a full size luxury sedan. And I don't think the quality of the materials, I don't think the luxury feel in the Arteon is anywhere comparable to the S8. So it's very much targeting a different buyer. You have to be looking for this experience, or if you want an Arteon, you're looking for a sort of lower tier, but more affordable experience. So it's hard to say whether that's this or that is a better deal. They're just completely different segments. Okay, this is the best way to do a car review from Michael Pang. Thank you. Well, I'm glad. Okay. See Are how you... smooth this is right now? This is the air suspension. I'm going to go over, like, this is actually kind of an interesting little bump section. And, I mean, you hear the bump, you feel a bit of the bump, but not much at all. Okay, from Harsh. Are you planning on doing family SUV segment for live Q&A. Also, you, do you see yourself becoming an SUV guy once the kiddos arrive? Uh, uh, well, so Christina already has an SUV. We already have an SUV. It's, we have two. We have two, you're right. Oh my goodness, I forgot. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's an SUV, but the Land Cruiser really is a truck. It's a solid axle truck. Yeah, so it's I don't just even, for camping. And it's just for camping, so I don't even think of that as an SUV. But the RAV4 that we have is very much an SUV. So I, you know, I'm already kind of in the SUV segment, if you will, um, as it relates to my own personal cars. When, when the kiddo does come, um, we will definitely be able to do some more full family style reviews of SUVs because we'll able, actually able to use the car seats in the rear and those kind of features that we wouldn't normally use when it was just Christina and I up here in the front. Now this is a pretty, fairly smooth road, but it does still have some bumps and undulations, and you can see that the rod is just, first of all, the cabin volume, it's hard to maybe come across in this video, but it's so, so quiet in here. We don't hear any wind. We hear just the tiniest bit of road noise. This, this car is on 21 inch wheels, so keep that in mind. You have narrower sidewalls than you would as standard if you have the 20, 20 inch wheels as standard. I think we already answered this question, Michael. How does it compare to the 7 Series as a chauffeured vehicle? Yeah. You already we, said that? Okay. Yeah, we did that. All right. Hi, bro from Uzbekistan. Hello. Hello. Had that one before? I don't know. I don't know. That may be new representation. Okay. All those, okay. those of you who are tuned in right now, thank you so much for joining the live Q&A. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Could you try to do a POV of the 2020 Lamborghini Aventador? Did, did you do that? Well, so I did the SVJ. Um, to do the standard Aventador would have to mean that they had one in the fleet. I can definitely check. I can see if they do. But uh, they may not because they may um, just have the special edition SVJ preparing for the next generation flagship model for Lamborghini. So what happens is these automakers will phase out certain cars as they get ready for the next generation. And that that probably has already happened at Lamborghini. It's the reason why it's very hard for me to get an Urus right now, um, just because they're already on to the next model year. But they're, they're not phasing out that car, they're just on to a new model year. Okay, I think you already answered this, but is this better than the S63 AMG or BMW 7 Series? Yeah, well, yeah, we, we answered that. Okay. In great detail, which is it's basically to say that uh, it is it is a very good value relative to those cars. I think that the interiors of the S S Class and 7 Series are perhaps a tiny bit better than this, but I don't think their ride quality and driving dynamics are any better than this car. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry, this one was a bit rough just because it was so hot. I think Christina and I were a little like, we've driven for, for a couple hours to get down here and then it's so warm. They know where we are. Oh, yeah, we, I did. I said that we uh, driven down from Orange County down to oh. uh, San Diego. So we, uh, we were just a little exhausted, but thanks for bearing with us. Hope we got through all your questions. If you have more questions, feel free to comment. We always read the comments and thanks for being miles, miles per hour followers and fans. We will see you guys next time.